r slash ask reddit what is the creepiest thing that society accepts as a cultural norm paparazzi and the whole celebrity culture who's fat who is dangerously skinny who broke up with who all very voyeuristic omg brad pitt just got a tooth removed today child beauty pageants Honestly I think this falls under the hypersexualization of little girls, something that is absolutely atrocious but accepted. Think of all the pedophiles watching that shit. The fact that we can show someone who has been brutally murdered on TV, but showing a woman's boobs is unacceptable. Addition, I'm talking about shows like Bones or CSI Additions too. Boobs was an example. I have boobs, so I don't particularly want to see more, I just want the option to Things would be so much different if the second amendment granted the right to bare boobs. Bare boobs he don't think this would markedly increase the liberty of our society. Edit. Or oh, it got edited and now I just look like some depraved weirdo talking about bare mammaries. Treating the naked human body like it's repulsive disgusting. Seriously. How did this abhorrence towards our own bodies become so standard? Religion. I don't like how socially acceptable debt seems to be now. You don't owe thousands of dollars to the federal government banks and corporations, how else are you going to get a job to pay those off? Please read this to understand the point of view which I'm trying to express. HTTP colon slash slash www2 McLean's Co the 16th of January 2013 the new underclass you need to be in school to have a stable future. To enroll in school you need to us 100k. Unfortunately the rich people don't need school because they can live off their parents wealth. But you have to be in school to have a good future. Okay so now that you're all finished school I forgot to keep your career option open for you so you can just work at McDonald's until it opens up okay? Oh. You've been working there for 5 years and still can't get a position in the career you wanted? Sucks to be you guess you didn't work hard enough. Do you want me to enroll you in another program at school to try another career field? Ducking life. Edit. So apparently some people are taking my wealthy remark and taking it too literally. I understand the now wealthy have earned their wealth. I've also understood that they've worked hard to help make their children's lives easier. This is where you have to understand the difference that wealthy families don't normally worry about things like transportation, where those who have trouble working multiple jobs and paying for school are stressing finding bus money to get to school. I also wanted to take the wealthy out of the equation so you can understand what it's like for those who are having trouble paying for necessities that want to go to school and achieve something in life. They work incredibly hard but get nowhere because luck just wasn't on their side. This is the struggle they are faced with as soon as they wish to achieve something greater than what society tells them to be. To add to that, I'm not even including the middle class families who can partially afford tuition but can't qualify for tuition aid because they are overqualified. Which means they either take on the debt themselves or stay out of school and miss out on the opportunities. Hilarious isn't it? Until you get an engineering degree, you deserve to starve. Reality TV. The irony of the name. What the duck is it with that shit? I remember watching Survivor a couple of times. But that was it for me. Why the hell would I want to watch Kim Kardashian? Who got famous for ducking a C-list quasi-celebrity? Go by Gucci? The fact that two of the biggest selling fictional series of the last decade, Twilight and Fifty Shades, both depicted abusive relationships. In the case of Twilight, it's even creepier that the girls reading these books are often at an age where they are extremely impressionable in how they perceive a healthy relationship. Edit. I'm not saying Fifty Shades is abusive because of the BDSM. There are plenty of people in the BDSM community who have completely healthy relationships. But when someone ignores Safiwoods, that's not being dominant. That's rape and no one who's going to say that rape isn't abuse. Also, jinkies, I didn't expect this reaction at all. I didn't realize the can of worms I was opening here and when I had to go to work I didn't have any idea what I'd come home to. I'm trying to get through most of the comments. Good and bad and thanks a bunch for the reddit gold. NPR, however wet blanket it may seem to say so, the more this series embraces its identity as a dance of abusive emotional grotesques, the more bothersome its themes become. Entertainment is entertainment. Fun is fun. Edwards and Jacob's stalker-like possessiveness and Bella's lack of agency are well covered territory by now. 
but when a saga popular with pre adolescent girls peaks romantically on a night that leaves the heroine to wake up covered with bruises in the shape of her husband's hands, and when that heroine then spends the morning explaining to her husband that she's incredibly happy even though he injured her, and that it's not his fault because she understands he couldn't help it in light of the depth of his passion, that's profoundly irresponsible. Dot, ah, amanticizing an intimate relationship that leaves bruises and scars is a particularly terrible idea in a film aimed at girls. Talking about this is tiresome, but then so is putting it in the movie, from depicting the loss of virginity as a naturally violent, frightening, physically dangerous experience to making Bella a woman with no life at all outside of her literally all-consuming pregnancy. The narrative sledger hammers are all as distasteful as they are inelegant. You know what this is. You won't be surprised if you've read the books. This is a descent into madness of a particularly gruesome kind. Edit. All of you saying that the NPR article is wrong because one instance of rough sex does not equal an abusive relationship are missing the point. It's not just about the sex but about everything in their relationship leading up to, including and beyond the sex. The article is a review of the movie that features the sex scene. So it uses that as the most visible example of this relationship. Read these articles for a more detailed analysis. I like that Jacob straight up calls her out as being in an abusive relationship. Hangs head in shame for knowing that. Rape in prison. It is seriously ducked up how people talk about prison rape as either a deserved punishment or a big joke. This disturbs me to no end. The socially acceptable, light-hearted jokes about men being raped in prison. Or he'll get what he deserves ha <laughs> lol. I live in China. The creepiest thing here is women are encouraged to speak and act like 12 years to attract men. Two ladies in my office talk in high pitched child voices and throw temper tantrums regularly and the guys think it's sexy. Ducking weird. Edit. Ignis99 was talking about how Chinese babies don't wear diapers and just wear crotchless pants and shit everywhere. That reminded me of another really creepy thing. I'm on the Chinese version of Facebook book. Renron. And my university students constantly put pictures of naked little boys. Anywhere from birth to 4 or 5 years of age. Because it's really cute apparently. I'm always struck how about half my students would be arrested for child porn in the west. To be clear though. These are not sexual. They are stupid. Silly pictures of things like the baby's penis as an elephant's trunk and stuff. And yes. Writing that sentence did make me realize just how ducked up that sounds. China is basically a pedophile's dreamland. Open bracket. This was a joke people. I actually think their thoughts on child nudity are far more healthy than the West's. Edit 2. Yes I agree the West has serious issues with sexualizing children as well. That parents get in trouble for taking pictures of their baby is seriously ducked up. I'm trying to deal with one of these girls at my home right now. It's unbearable. She makes three sounds. Stomping, yelling, and a terrible laugh. Do you know of any literary sources on this topic I could read through? How can I combat it? And how the duck do guys think this is sexy? It's cultural. You don't combat it except by explaining how ducking annoying it is which might make them do it less around you but they'll still do it. Seriously. I've tried combating it with exes and it doesn't work. If this girl is your girlfriend, sit her down. Tell her it's really annoying and you don't want to date a 12 year old girl because you are a pedophile. If she accepts that, congratulations. If she doesn't, break up and move on. And how the duck do guys think this is sexy? I've had many Chinese guys explain it as such. Children are both innocent and useless. Innocent means virgin and sweet. Useless mean they need you and you are HTE man so you will feel strong and useful when the girl tells you she doesn't know how to carry her purse in public so you have to not to be incredibly rude to Chinese men. And sorry to those Chinese men who also find this creepy as I know Theria Ray men out there. But it basically boils down to some Chinese men need weak girls to feel strong and are obsessed with virgins because it's an incredibly traditional and close minded culture that hasn't had the chance to modernize its thinking in regards to women. Men can go duck all the KTV horses they want but a girl must save her precious virginity for the man who can put up with her childish bullshit. Rant sorry. Been here a long time. A lot of bitterness built up. What's with the window stickers on the back of cars? 
hollering people who've died, why would you need to say hey, somebody I cared about died to the person behind you at the red light, I can't understand people's need to make their personal grief public this way, it's like driving around in a headstone, creepy. I'm from the US, but the Pledge of Allegiance, when you think about it it's pretty creepy. A teacher friend of mine says it is really creepy to watch all the students in unison say the pledge. It honestly seems like something out of those dystopian future films, or North Korea. Pageants for little girls, creepy on multiple levels. Or, more accurately, pageants for parents, starring little girls. The only thing that separates you from a head-on collision on the road is a bit of paint in the center, and also knowing how to drive. And more worryingly, trusting that everyone else on the road knows how to drive. The difference between a girl wearing a bra and panties in public and a swimsuit is that only one is socially acceptable. The fact that nudity itself is taboo seems weird to me. Sure, being naked all the time isn't plausible but people freak out about nudity. It's just the human body. It's not that big a deal. Speak for yourself. I have a big deal. And I'm proud of it. How paying a woman or man to duck you on camera and then putting the footage up for sale is perfectly fine but doing the same things on camera is illegal and can permanently ruin both persons lives dressing up our dead to parade around to others i'm sorry i know closure is important but it always reminds me of taxidermy which i also find creepy just put them in a white sheet and bury them they don't know you're putting them in a suit or whatever. Don't waste money. Edit. For all of you saying funerals are for the living. Comma. Would it be acceptable to dress up my uncle as a wonder woman and bury him? After all the funeral is for me. Strip clubs. I mean I like a nice pair of boobs as the next guy. But paying women who we have no chance of sleeping with to jiggle their naughty bits in front of us is rather odd. Also the idea of a bunch of guy friends going to get hard with each other is as creepy as those old middle school jerk off sleepovers that we all had. Edit. Well apparently me and my friends were weird little shits. Or you all won't admit going into your dad's playboys and noticing a funny feeling. Edit 2. Thanks for the gold. I'm not sure if it is for the 10 year olds jerking it or the strip clubs. But thanks. Not sure if I remember those sleepovers. I bet you don't even remember penis inspection day at school. That if you take a candid picture of an attractive person it's creepy but if you take a candid picture of a fat person it's hilarious and on peer plea of women. Com. I love it when someone on FB posts a status about how terrible bullying is and then posts a pic making fun of some poor soul who has 10. 000, 000, 000, 000, 000 strangers passing around their pic to make fun of them. Whoa. You made it to the end? You're a ducking beast. I'll cut you a deal. Smash like and subscribe for more curated content bruh. It's free and that's a great price.